thank you to all the staff, thank you for the council for being here, and thank you to the toilets and to the Winkles for being here, our faithful ones who already know what's going on in the city. Uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and go through this presentation. We are going to do a little different format than what we had originally planned. Uh, this was going to be an interactive opportunity for our citizens. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to, just going to do the presentation, uh, record it, and then if there's any questions, please feel free to ask them, and we'll do our best to, to address those. Um, we also have our department heads up here who are more than eager to answer any questions that you might have. And so uh, we're going to try to have this as a, uh, a follow-up meeting, same format at a different time. Hopefully we'll uh, get a little bit better turnout. Uh, does anyone have any questions before we get started? Would anyone like translation into Spanish? Because we also have that available. I would. <laughs> All right. We ready? All right. Well, welcome everyone uh, to discuss our 2019 community survey results. Can everyone hear me? All right. Do I need to speak louder? Is that all right? Okay. Very good. Uh, this was conducted last summer uh, online and via paper. Uh, we did not have quite the turnout we had hoped uh, for this, but we did get some good quality feedback that we were hoping to elaborate on further tonight uh, to get some deeper detail as to what uh, is the expectation from our citizens. Uh, so tonight we're going to go over uh, kind of four different categories. Uh, what were the results of the survey and what information did we glean from that and how are we going to address those issues? and. Uh, did it just evoke more questions than it did answers? So here's what we know. Uh, we broke down the responses into three tiers based off of uh, the priority that our citizens put them in. The first tier is high importance. With that, uh, you see a lot of focus on our infrastructure. Uh, our citizens want to see good streets, safe sidewalks. They want to be able to uh, turn on their faucet and have clean water and flush without having any issues on the other end. Uh, they're also concerned about economic development, the financial management of the city, as well as our trash collection. And uh, I would say that all of those are pretty essential to how cities run, function, and the ease of life for people. Nobody likes to have trash piling up, nobody likes to have backed up sewer, uh, everyone likes to have clean waters, clean water, and uh, a good, clean city. Uh, those that uh, kind of fell into the middle category uh, include some of our services, uh, fire and ambulance, and I believe that some of the reason that this may have fallen into the second category is because uh, they're already doing a, a good job, so it is very important, but maybe not the highest uh, priority. Uh, public communication. Uh, we hope that this meeting, as well as future meetings going forward, as we try to reach out to the public and get them to come out and participate and let their voices be heard, we hope that we can do better in our public communication. Uh, city parks, recreation uh, for our citizens and place to spend their evenings is important, as is code enforcement and health enforcement. Uh, and right along hand in hand with all three of those is our beautification of our city. And finally, we have our third tier, uh, which was classified as lower importance. Uh, with that, we have the CJC, uh, which is a, a good service that our community provides that not many people realize. And unless they've uh, used those services, they probably don't have any reason to chime in on them. Uh, the importance of transportation planning, utility billing, port, <coughs> airport, permits and addressing, and animal control. And a lot of these are very important aspects of the city that many of us just take for granted. Uh, they're not seen very often, uh, but they do help in how the city operates at, uh, at its highest ability. Uh, some of the things that came to the forefront of programs that our citizens would like to see uh, as you can see, more than 50% said that we should be providing uh, more parks and recreation programs, that we should be providing recycling, 
as well as multi-item pickup and removal. We also uh, received responses that housing, traffic, and infrastructure if I can click that one as well, are, are some of the most important things for our citizens. Uh, housing and traffic, I think everyone can agree. Uh, we have been hit hard by the rapid growth of the oil field, which has benefited the city in many ways, but has also caused uh, some issues for people trying to get around town and uh, finding places to live. There, there was a lot of concern over how traffic flows. Uh, with 67%, two-thirds of all people who responded uh, stated that uh, they felt that traffic control could be improved, uh, while only 8% felt that it was flowing well through town. Uh, so that is something that we feel that we definitely need to address, uh, working with TxDOT and our other partners on improving the traffic flow around town. Safety of our citizens is also something that uh, jumped out at us as a part of this result uh, of, these, of this survey, in that uh, about a third of our citizens do not feel safe while traveling through town uh, or in public spaces. And so we definitely want to uh, bring that to the top of our, our list of things that we are paying attention to so that we can make Pegasus a safe place for everyone, uh, both in reality and in perception so that they feel safe when they're out. Uh, there was also about a third of our respondents who felt that we need to provide more parks and recreation. Uh, the city has created a new parks department and this is something that we were working towards, um, as well as the council's approval of several CIP projects for our parks department. So these are projects that uh, we will continue to address and we hope that uh, we can get some more feedback on what our citizens would like to see with that. <clears throat> nearing the end, I know this is going kind of quick, but we're nearing the end. 71% uh, uh, feels that code enforcement needs to work a little bit harder on debris on private property and illegal dumping around the city. Uh, these are some things that the city is already underway working on. Uh, the city council has approved additional positions for code enforcement, uh, one of which is an environmental enforcement, uh, which is uh, currently being filled, uh, which will allow us to address a lot of this illegal dumping. Uh, if there are specific items that our citizens would like to see, we, we definitely want to hear from them. And, 42%, almost half of our citizens feel uh, that they need more public input and participation in decision making. We hope that uh, that 42% will come out to the next meeting that we have. Uh, as you can see, uh, I'm not sure 42% of our respondents are here tonight, so we hope that uh, we can get the word out and make sure that they feel that they are welcome to come participate, have their voice heard. Uh, we do want to hear from them, um, but it, it's very difficult to do so uh, unless there are other forms that we can find that would better facilitate how uh, we interact with them. 68% uh, or two-thirds uh, want to see additional services and funding levels. Uh, this is something that will have to be addressed during each of the budget seasons. Uh, again, we would love to have some input from our citizens on what they would like to see and what their level of service is that they're expecting. And uh, surprisingly, uh, we had quite a bit of support uh, for passing some bonds uh, in the range of $150 million for transportation utility and parks. And so that uh, goes along with what they responded, that those are some of their highest priorities and things that we should be focusing on. And uh, we, would, we would like to get some further information of what types of projects they would like to see if such a bond were to be presented. 
uh, again, uh, thank you all for coming out. This has been a very quick presentation, and we will have this posted on our city Facebook and city website so that people can view it and review it. Uh, and hopefully we can garner some more interest for some of the follow-up meetings that we have planned. Uh, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and open it up to the public with any questions that they might have about city services, the community survey, questions, concerns, cheese days, cheese mace, anything else that uh, we might have out in the crowd. So I, I turn the time over to you. The total number of people that responded. Not all people responded to all questions uh, as they were not all required, uh, but we had around 210 on average that responded to all questions. Mr. Gillette. I don't have a question. I would like to make a statement uh, since this is going to be broadcast out. 42% wanted more input in the city government. You ain't going to do that thing at home. The city council meeting twice a month. There's meetings like this whenever y'all can get them arranged and you see the kind of turnout. If you want more input in the city, get up off the couch, wait for TV, go to the city council meetings, talk to your councilman, talk to your mayor, talk to the city staff, come to meetings like this and let your voice be heard. Otherwise, you know, none of y'all are on the psychic hotline, so I doubt you doing it real well at least in mind. That's my concern. Thank you, Mr. Tillett. Any other comments or questions from our audience or from our department heads? Anything that they would like to state for the video? I will make a statement. I want to commend Holly and the public for I mean, the roll-off campaign that y'all start doing every other quarter or every quarter. I guess it's been now for two years, Holly. The the Pegasus Cares roll-off. Yes. It's actually every month on the third Saturday. Okay, I thought it was one okay. And then we have our community cleanup, which is twice a year. Okay, but I think that has been a great help. I mean, the roll-off campaign is wonderful because people that have the large items do not have to pay to go or they have to it out there. So really commend the city for doing that. That's one of the things I agree with Mr. Collett. If you want something to say, it means show up and say it and not hide behind your computer screen. Thank you, Mr. Actually, um, our roll-off campaign is actually managed now by our code enforcement department and, and uh, chief building official, Johnny McKinney. Uh, so he's taken on the role of, of managing that and continuing uh, the availability of that program. Good job, Johnny. You're doing a great job. And that, that program's about 18 months old, is that right? It is, yes. That's, yeah. that's exactly right. He started August of 2018. And we actually started out a little slow, but it, it did build. And last I was involved in it, they had a very good, they had continual turnout. Yeah, and that site is low, uh, moved around town, depending on which month it is. And about that, Mr. McKinney? Absolutely. Um, the last one we had, we had three roll-offs filled up. So we are getting a lot of participation. Hopefully you can see that in the community that it's being cleaned up. Um, in February, it'll be on the south side, so over on Stafford and Cactus and Stafford and Moore. Moore. So, uh, if you have, and you don't have to be in that area to uh, bring stuff out. It saves you some trip to the landfill, a little bit anyway. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, regardless of what neighborhood is located in that month, uh, anyone across the city, uh, as long as they're a private citizen, uh, businesses still need to use the, uh, the manners that they have available to them. Uh, but you can take it to any of the sites anywhere across the city. We just move it around so that it's a little bit closer for certain neighborhoods uh, during that specific month. Any other questions or comments? I've got a comment. Conrad Saldana. 
Uh, I want to come in, Donnie, because I see their, their trucks there all over town. And, uh, it, you know, our town needs cleanup. We've got a lot of buildings still standing up, especially down there that need to be uh, clean. Uh, but one of the things I really like seeing is the boots. I really like those things. I like reading, you know, what kind of theme they got. Uh, you know, Dessa was a jackrabbit. And uh, uh, I was, you know, Dessa 35 years, and now we got it here in Texas. And I really, uh, I really think that looks, that looks neat when a business like, like the one we have in front of the city hall and uh, the Dairy Queen, I think I've read that one the same 10 times. Every time I go over there, I'm, I'm reading the same thing over and over. So, but I just want to come in to that. That, that, looks, that looks nice. And I really like the, the way the, the parts are coming around. Uh, you know, when people see people actually doing work out there, you know, it, 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 you know, it, it puts our town where we, we need to be and it's out in, the, in a forward progress instead of just sitting back. The town got the way it is because of people. It, 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 people have to take care of, of, of building. The, my house is, if I don't take care of my house, nobody else is, and it's going to fall apart. So uh, the town itself, uh, we as, as a councilman and, and, and you as a city manager and all of us working together, we can make things happen in this town. Uh, but like, like Mr. Toledo said, uh, you know, we hear all kinds of problems that they want to talk about, but nobody wants to do nothing about it. I expect, you know, the city to take care of everything. Starts at home. And, and the city can address a lot of the issues. Uh, we need to know what specifically they're they're looking for. So yes. Thank you for that, Councilman. We hope that uh, we can get some more input uh, so we can know specifics. Uh, this community survey was quite lengthy, and it did take some time to fill out. And so those uh, that did fill it out are to be commended. Uh, but we would like to hear from them again. We would like to get some more specifics that this survey uh, really did not lend itself to, as it was multiple choice and a few uh, where they could fill in uh, their comments, uh, but we'd really like to get some, some deeper dives on some of the information. Also on the uh, Boots, which has been a very successful program, I believe they can contact the Chamber of Commerce for additional information regarding that program. So we encourage our citizens and our businesses to uh, contact the Chamber and to join the Chamber for that matter. Any other comments? I would just like to say, Applause, applause to everyone. That is a nice facilitator on industry. That was a great job after all that we were all at the beginning. That's a little bit of nice. Thank you for that. How many questions will we say? 50 questions. <coughs> it, it was quite lengthy. And it has to do with everything from uh, basic services, uh, priorities, uh, what they would like to see uh, as new programs or services, uh, how they felt that we were doing with the services that we were, that we are providing, um, as well as uh, some other information or other questions about uh, how the city communicates, uh, the manner that it communicates, how well it communicates, uh, customer service. Uh, they did have a few questions regarding bonds or if there were any interest in supporting um, additional funds for large projects. Um, and so it, it was quite lengthy. One of the things that uh, we will be working on uh, to address that, and actually it is occurring next Tuesday at City Hall, as people uh, come in to pay their utility bill. Uh, we're going to have a short four or five question uh, survey, which is just a, a micro snippet of this one uh, that they Monday. can make. Is it, is it Monday? Right. Monday, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Monday. Thank you for that correction. Uh, where it'll just be a, a quick five questions. It's also available on our different social media that people can answer that. Um, whether they're coming in to pay their utility bill or not, they're welcome to stop by. Uh, there'll be uh, department heads out to answer any questions throughout the day. And uh, it will be a good opportunity, uh, again, to seek some additional feedback. Could you uh, talk a little bit about what uh, Frank Spencer and the guy had to say last night about uh, the 
Absolutely. So Frank Spencer uh, is the engineering firm that has been hired by Reeves County to work on the business loop around town. Uh, at the joint entity meeting last night, uh, and just a real quick for uh, information of everyone, the joint entity meeting is held once a month, usually towards the end of the month, and it's held between the city, the county, the hospital, and the school district uh, so that everyone can get together and discuss common issues. Uh, that is also another meeting that's open to the public and that is generally held at Odessa College, uh, Pecos Campus. So we invite people to come out to that. Uh, but last night uh, at the joint entity meeting, Frank Spencer gave us an update that TxDOT has gone ahead with funding $10 million towards the engineering design of the Eastern Loop, which will go from Highway 285 to Highway 285. Uh, this will be a, a big reliever of a lot of the truck traffic that we see coming into town. Uh, hopefully take care of some of that running that you see on uh, 3rd Street and uh, Cedar as everyone's coming in to make that turn and go along the, the business route. Uh, so this is going to be a, a very big project. The fact that TxDOT has appropriated money for the engineering and we also heard last night that uh, they have put out the bid for that to actually secure that engineering firm. Uh, that's a very good sign. It means that uh, Pecos and Reese County are now on Textos radar. Uh, we also heard two other updates. One is that Textot is undertaking an I-20 corridor study uh, to discuss the possibility of changing some of the interchanges, the on and off ramps uh, from I-20 uh, onto city streets. Uh, as well as turning some of the frontage roads into one-way couplets, uh, which would greatly help with traffic. Uh, the third update that they gave us were some of the small projects that they had suggested to TxDOT, uh, which are addressing various uh, intersections throughout town. Uh, these are low-dollar, uh, comparatively, projects that will introduce turn lanes, uh, new striping, uh, intersection improvements, uh, it also includes uh, traffic lights at the frontage roads uh, on an off ramp for uh, State Highway 17 as well as County Road 201. Uh, and so there's three major projects that the TxDOT and the county are working on, which will uh, hopefully help with some of the uh, traffic flow on the periphery of, of the city. Uh, just on the 201, it's kind of Yeah, so the question is, are we looking at uh, uh, straightening out or putting, aligning them, uh, Stafford Road and County Road 201, and that's correct, uh, the city is continuing to look at that. Uh, the surveying has been completed or almost completed on that project, and uh, we're working on contacting the landowners to see if we can acquire the right of way. So, so the question is, uh, the road, I'm sorry, I'm sure I'm for the benefit of the video. Uh, the, the question is regarding uh, the improvements on Tolliver Street out by the new rec center, as well as the potential of looping that back onto County Road 118. Uh, that is a project that uh, has been included in the city's long-term transportation plan. Uh, and the county, as they mentioned last night, is interested in jumpstarting those conversations. And so it does fit into the city's long-term plan. It is on that, uh, our approach, our long-term approach, and uh, we will be working with again on that project. Uh, there weren't specific reasons given uh, in the comments. 
Uh, again, I, I would hope to get some better feedback from the citizens to, to know why that is. Uh, we specifically worded that question as to how they felt uh, about it. Um, and if you, if you look at the uh, age range of respondents, uh, as well as some, how they answered some of the other questions, I would guess that it has to do with some of our citizens that have been here a while who uh, are still adjusting to the high amount of traffic flow and the high number of trucks that we have going through town. Um, I, I know uh, Cedar and Eddie are both of great concern for the crossing, uh, trying to get across. Um, I, I don't know specifics, but I, I do know that uh, based off of some of the the correlations that we see that uh, there, there is some concern from our older citizens of being able to drive around safely uh, with all the trucks that we've got in town. Councilman. Uh, on, on, that, on that note about the, the traffic on Cedar, you know, uh, just crossing over the, uh, I think that the flashing lights there by the by Alfredo's and Aaron's, they sort of don't, don't come on until probably about 7.30 in the, in the morning. But before that, the traffic there, you know, from the people going, going to and from work, the 18 wheelers, uh, they're, still, uh, they're still flying by there. And it, it, when they hit Third Street, and the red light, that red light becomes green, it's like a race to pursue. <laughs> see who can get first, quicker south or the other direction. And the, the reason I'm bringing it up, the other day my, my wife was going to pick up the boys and she's in the turning lane. Well, she had an 18 wheeler on the turning lane coming from the opposite direction, just to, because somebody was turning into Alfredo to go eat and he didn't want to wait. So they, they actually, took the, the, the meat, and she's standing there watching this 18 wheeler head her way. So, uh, you know, there's kids in those vehicles, you know, and, and this guy, I, I would suggest, just a suggestion, maybe putting those flashing lights a lot earlier, like at 2.30 instead of, or at seven in the morning, because, you know, I take my, my grandson to school at seven a.m. And those flashing lights aren't on, so uh, and then they don't honor them a lot of times. So I'm just I'm just kind of curious if we could change the time on that to a little earlier. Maybe it would slow them down a little bit, but knowing that those flashing lights are are already on. Yeah, I, I believe those flashing lights in particular have to do with the school zone. Yes, Is that correct. Around, yes, yeah, uh, around Seventh Street there, um, by Aaron's. Yes. Yeah. And, and so that is actually controlled between the school district and TechStock. One of the things that uh, we 